Hello, welcome to my channel, The Hebrew Bible. This is Moses Gumali, and in this video, we'll talk about the horns of Moses. Did Moses have horns? Did he grow horns? Here in this picture on the left hand side, you can see um, Moses holding Ten Commandments, the tablets of Ten Commandments, uh, clearly depicted with horns of a bull. Horns. And uh, here is uh, Michelangelo. As a sculpture uh, that's found in one of the churches in Rome. It's a beautiful sculpture, of course, made of marble. Here you can see on the right hand side two horns protruding out of the head of Moses. So, where did these guys get the idea that uh, Moses had horns or he grew horns? We read in Exodus chapter 34, verse 29, like this. So let me give a context of this one. So in Exodus chapter 34, Moses goes again into the Mount Sinai right, to receive uh, the Ten Commandments for the second time. Um, you know, um, first after they were they were broken down, and uh, he goes and he comes down from the Mount with the two tablets of testimony, and uh, we see that people saw him. Uh, with uh, his face shining, the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. Ki karan or panav bedabero ito. So when he talked, when God talked with him, the skin of his face, that is or panav, the skin of his face, shined. So that shined or shone, that word, is Karan, Kof, Resh, Nun, Sofit. Okay. Now, if you read through, this same word occurs a couple of times, and in the end, in uh, verse 35, we read, Vera'u bene Yisrael et pene Moshe ki Karan or pane Moshe. So, the children of Israel saw the face of Moshe, Moses, and because the his face shined, the skin of Moses' face shone, it says. That's again, Karan or Pene. Okay, Pene is the face. Uh, and uh, or, or, or is a line uh, vav resh. Or is a skin. Okay, now um, it's the same word, Karan. This is the word. It means to shine in uh, in the kal stem. Okay, the verbs, uh, Hebrew verbs, uh, occur in many stems: kal, nifal, piel, pual, hifil, hofal, hitpael, and there are some rare stems. So there are basic seven stems, uh, and I think I'll do another video on the Hebrew grammar, grammar of the verbs, sometime. Uh, in which we will discuss about those things. If you want to know about it, there is a video about the meaning of the name of the Lord Yodhe Vavhe grammatically, and in that video, you can find it uh, in the series of the Divine Name or Tetragrammaton on my channel, uh, and you can, uh, one of the videos that I've covered has, uh, I will actually leave the link down below in the description today, so you can check it out. In that video, I have briefly mentioned about the conjugations of the Hebrew verbs. And Hebrew verbs come in seven stems, basically, kal, nifal, piel, pual, uh, hifil, hofal, and hithpael. So those seven I have just described briefly in that. Okay. So it means to shine. Whereas in the, uh, you know, in the, um, in, in the Latin Vulgate translation, translated by Jerome in the fourth century, so in the 300s, or maybe 400s, I think somewhere in the late 300s or early 400s, can't remember exactly. Uh, so Jerome, uh, was one of the only two scholar, church fathers who knew Hebrew, who they learned Hebrew, um, from the rabbis. They went to the Jews and they learned Hebrew from the rabbis. Other than that, pretty much all the church fathers, including those who wrote the creeds and the canons, did not know a letter of Hebrew. They couldn't read two words together. 
Okay, now this guy who translated the Latin Vulgate, which became the official uh, church language, Latin, uh, of the Roman Catholic Church. So in that, in that translation, uh, he translated Cornuta. Uh, in the next uh, the verse 35, we read Cornutam. So these means a horned, like, so he's basically saying uh, Moses had horns. Because, I'll tell you why, <laughs> because, um, because of which, we'll, we'll, we'll come to why he translated it like that. But because of which, you know, in the medieval paintings and sculptures, uh, we see Moses being depicted uh, with horns. Here on the left hand side, clearly Moses having horns. Uh, here on the right hand side, Moses has horns like a stump of the horns a little bit. Uh, and of course, uh, to the credit of uh, uh, other painters and um, other sculptors, some guys, they, they depicted the horns, but in a different way, not like the regular bull horns, but as though the rays of light are emerging. You can see here on the left hand side, Moses has horns, but they look like more like rays. Uh, here too, on the right hand side, uh, here Moses is sitting during the war uh, on Amalek. Um, uh, Aaron and Hur were holding his hands while he lifts up his hands and Joshua was fighting. Well, this is much before the incident we read in uh, Exodus 34 anyway. But the artist here depicts Moses with two rays of light, light shooting up uh, from his head. So you can see, and they look like horns, but they're not horns, but they are, uh, you can see, rays of light. Okay. But that's what is actually intimated in the scripture. It doesn't really say from the head as though they look like horns. It says his face, the skin of his face. So obviously we are talking about this portion that shined. Okay. So he's not horns coming out of his cheeks or forehead. I mean, this area, the nose and the cheeks and the forehead, this is where the skin of his face shined. That's what the text clearly says. Now, why did, um, uh, you know, Jerome uh, in the Latin Vulgate translate uh, uh, Karan as uh, Karan, as, uh, you know, as uh, Hans is because the noun, not the verb, the noun Karen, Karen, Segol, Kof, Segol, Resh, Segol, and Nun means horn. That's pretty much uh, well known. The, the noun Karen means horn is, is quite frequent in the Bible uh, and also in the ancient Near East languages. Uh, whereas the verb Karan in the sense of shining is a very rare verb that's only mentioned there in Exodus 34. Um, and it doesn't mean horn, but it means to shine, to shoot forth rays. That's what it means. So here, same verb karan in the hifil stem also could mean to grow horns. But the point that we are looking at is the, the, the scripture where it occurs. It is in the kal stem. Uh, karan means to shine. So that's how uh, the English translations uh, that we have seen have translated as to shine, which is the correct translation. Interestingly, uh, Sanskrit has a similar word. Kiran is a ray or beam of light. Kiran, mm, there's a na, it is actually not na, but okay, you can approximate it. There is another word, karan, uh, in Sanskrit. Uh, which uh, means causative. Uh, it could, karn means uh, ears. There is another word, karn. So long, karn means the cause, the cause of the, the root cause, karn. So I do not know if this is a borrowed word or maybe that's the meaning of whatever I'm just mentioning. Kiran uh, has a bit of a similarity with karn. Although, of course, Sanskrit is considered a Indo-European language. Uh, but to be honest, I find uh, knowing uh, Hindi and Indian languages personally, 
I see a lot of, not not lot, but many, you can say, similar sounding and similar meaning words, as a sort of synonyms, you can say, cognates, which unfortunately the scholars don't seem to agree. And the reason why is because they think that uh, Sanskrit, of course, is an Indo-European language, whereas they put Hebrew uh, in the what is known as Afro-Afro-Semitic language group. So Semitic, so they don't see any connection whatsoever between these two language families. Well, I mean, in the Bible, we read that all the languages have ultimately come from one proto language, uh, and they got mixed up, um, you know, at the Tower of Babel. And I'm not surprised that some of the words in Sanskrit do have parallels with the Hebrew here and there, although not uh, very much. For example, the word earth, uh, in English, um, is an Indo-European word. Um, Aretz is a Hebrew. In Arabic, it is Ard. And Ard is an Earth sound a bit similar. Uh, I've asked some linguists, but they say, well, they are not really related. And they call them like coincidences. Well, okay. Uh, they know better. We are not linguists, so let's move on. Right, so the horns themselves are not really uh, supposed to be understood in the negative sense, although the depiction of Moses with horns in the paintings, etc., where indeed uh, some argue that it was done, uh, you know, in an anti-Semitic way uh, to demonize the Jews because you put the horns to Moses and as though he has the devil's horns, uh, you know, whatever, right? So I think there may be partially some truth to it. Uh, in fact, people may have used it, even though it may not have been intended initially, but then people might have used it like to, um, you know, for anti-Semitism purposes. Well, um, the horns themselves, though, need not be taken in the negative light because we read throughout in the Bible that uh, the horns, here we read in this verse in the book of Psalms, all the horns of the wicked also will I cut off, but the horns of the righteous shall be exalted. This is the horns of the wicked. Karne. Agadea Teromamna Karnot Sadik. Both are plural, horns of. It is in the construct form, plural construct form. Here it is Karne. Probably they're using Karnaim. Here they see use Karnot. It's in the feminine, it's probably in the masculine, this one here. Uh, but anyway, so these are the two words, horns. Uh, the horns of the righteous. So, Horns of the righteous obviously are metaphoric and uh, they shall be exalted. So nothing uh, to think them in a negative sense. Horns, uh, all, like they depict the authority and the power. That's what it is. Not that one has physical horns on the heads. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching this video. Please do like and subscribe to my channel and do comment below in the comments. And I will see you again with the next video as soon as I can. Thank you very much.